So actually, we're going to tackle two more reactions in this video that are on the summary guidelines uh, of all the reactions of the listings, and that's reactions five and six. And that's because there are mechanisms involved, and it kind of goes along with, I mean, it is adding alcohols to alkenes. Okay, so let's do a little review from the last video. If I were to give you this alkene, and I threw in either H2SO4, and I said cold dilute, or, you know, I put H3O+, plus. this is our Markovnikov addition of water, right? And the mechanism would look a little like we would protonate this double bond, right? So he would grab H+, plus. we would initially have to pick, do we form this carbocation or this carbocation? Obviously, we pick the more stable one. We give the hydrogen to the primary carbon. We leave our secondary carbocation without a bond because he's the more stable carbocation of our two options. Then we have water attack, right? Well, actually, psych, 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 psych. Almost got myself. We have to check for shifts, right? Methyl or hydride. And if you can see, to our left is the opportunity to have a hydride shift, right? So if we then go through with that shift, we would have a tertiary carbocation, and in that case, water would then attack, right, if we had H2O. And after a cleanup step where we deprotonate this oxygen, we would have this product, okay? So remember, this reaction subject to shifts. However, what if we were just sick and tired of shifts, right? What if we just wanted to either have an addition of water where we had the alcohol end up right here with no hydride shift, or we just wanted the terminal alcohol and we wanted actually to put the OH on the carbon that wouldn't be the most stable carbocation. And that's what this video is here for right now. So let me get my very ratchet rag to erase this and make us some space. The point of this video is to basically give us more options of how to add water to alkenes without any shifts. Okay? So let's look at the first reaction we're going to do. This is reaction number five. Given that same structure, double bond on the end, right? If I were to list this whole, there's actually a lot of reagents, so honestly the hardest part of this rea reaction, in my opinion, is remembering the reagents. If you throw in a little mercuric acetate, that's HG, and then OAC, that's acetate, along with some water, that's the first step. The second step is just NABH4, some base as a cleanup step. You don't need to know this mechanism. Here's the beauty of it. You do just a Markovnikov addition with no rearrangements. So the thought process is you look at your sub, like you look at your reactant, you look directly at the carbons a part of the double bond. You then say to yourself, okay, who is the most substituted carbon? Who is the carbon with the highest degree? Or if you want to think about it this way, which carbon would make the most stable carbocation? Right, we're dealing with a primary and a secondary, so obviously the secondary is more substituted, right? And basically, you do an addition of water, you add OH to that carbon, the more substituted one, and there, this mechanism involves no carbocations, so as a result, there are no shifts. You just form the product you'd expect to form without a single chance of a shift occurring. Pretty cool, right? So, again, let's see if I showed you guys this reaction right here. I think we did this in the last video. If I throw in some HG, OAC, whoa, can't spell. If I throw in some mercuric acetate with some water, and a second step of NABH4, then you kind of get a mixture of products, right? Because these are equally secondary, right? So before, right, we get a mixture of products. Before what you'd expect, was, you know, we'd form a carbocation, one second, 
before we throw a we form a carbocation here, then we would have a corresponding methyl shift, but not with this. You form a straight up uh, addition of water. So this was you know kind of an example to show how there's a lack of a shift, but this one shows you just find that more substituted carbon. So we attack on the OH. Okay, so now I want to show you guys how we can kind of get the, uh, the, uh, an addition of water to the least substituted carbon. And again, I'm going to kind of use my, my rag. Okay, so to also give that reaction name, 5 is called oxymercuration D mercuration. So literally the pronouncing the name, spelling the name, remembering the reagents, hardest part. However, if we wanted to do reaction six, reaction six is called hydroboration. And this gives us an alcohol in the least substituted position. And here are the reagents. Let me look at my cheat sheet. So if you treat some alkene with a first step of BH3, and then you also toss in some H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, as well as some NaOH, some hydroxide, and a little bit of water. Now here's your thought process. You look at the two carbons a part of the double bond. Unlike oxymercuration, demercuration, you're going to say, okay, this OH is going to go on the least substituted carbon, a part of this double bond. Forget this carbon, right? If we're looking at a secondary carbon and a primary carbon, it's going to go on the least substituted carbon, which is primary, kind of like the lower degree carbon. So the product you can expect is this. And again, you don't need to know a mechanism for this. So to give you another example, let's just say I had this type of reaction. Again, I treat this alkene with BH3 and a second step of H2O2, NaOH, and water. Here's the thought process. Look at the two carbons, a part of the double bond. Right, this carbon is tertiary. This carbon is primary, right? Who is going to get the OH? Who's the, where is the water going to be added? Least, sub, look, least substituted carbon, right? So, that's going to go on the primary carbon. So, think about all your tools with adding water to alkenes. You can do H3O plus and H2, or H2SO4 cold dilute. That's a carbocation mechanism. It's subject to methyl and hydride shifts. However, if you need, so if that's fine, you can use that. But if you need a straight up addition, where you want it to go to the most substituted carbon, go for oxymercuration, demercuration. However, if you want it in the kind of least substituted position, then you can do hydroboration. And what this is called, this is called an anti-addition of water. And I'll explain why. It's anti just because this is kind of where it would normally go, this position. That's like the major kind of uh, the regular addition uh, location, the more substituted carbon. But if you put on the least substituted carbon, we do an anti-addition of water. And we have another one of these mechanisms similar coming up. Okay, that was a lot. Reactions five and six. They're on the completing the reaction worksheet. But just remember, the luxury here is that we don't have any shifts in either case. Six gives you the anti-product, the least substituted carbon. Five would give you the more substituted carbon. Okay, now we will be moving on to yet again more reactions.